with the Nile Express's reputation as a first-class train. Uh-huh. The food is pretty good, too. <coughs> okay, so maybe there are a few problems with the food, but the service is top-notch. some problems with the food and the service that have to be addressed, but at least there are no mysteries. <laughs> what was that explosion? This is intolerable! <laughs> George Ruddy Duck is up to his tricks again. That is one duck with a warped sense of humor. I have had just about enough of you and your hat and jokes. If you don't stop this minute, I'll... <laughs> <laughs> what? What are you going to do about it? Hit me with your ascot? <laughs> it was only a joke. <laughs> Someone should teach that duck a lesson. Give him a dose of his own medicine. I'm not so sure, Willard. I've never found fighting fire with fire very successful. I bet he'd stop if he knew what it's like to be the victim of a practical joke. Can you believe it, Willard? The tomb of Tutankhamun and discovered. Just look at the treasures Professor Bufflehead has uncovered. Bufflehead? He's not related to my boss, Chief Inspector Bufflehead. Just as there are many mallards and pigeons in the world, the same goes with Buffleheads. That's too bad, because one is enough for any world. Put this in my camera, will you? I'll want to examine it during our trip to Cairo. Sharing a cabin with a mummy would be creepy. <laughs> Watch this, Auntie. George! Uh, say, George! Uh, can I have a word with you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, George, those were some crazy pranks you played on Lady Teal and Sir Reginald this morning. <laughs> Glad you like them, pal. Good to see someone else in this train knows how to have some fun. <laughs> oh, I know how to do that all right. I hope this teaches you a lesson. No one likes to have pranks played on them. I don't think we'll be having any more problems with George on this trip, Auntie. I wouldn't be too sure about that, Willard. We'll see who outpranks who. I would like to wrap you, please. 
please, check it for spiders this time. Hmm. Oh, dear. I hope George doesn't cause a scene. I tell you, pal, you sure got me good with that squirting flower. <laughs> How about we call a cruise? See, Andy, my plan worked perfectly. No hard feelings, then. A truce it is. <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> you fell for one of the oldest tricks in the book. <laughs> Always remember that George Ruddy Duck can dish out pranks better than anyone. Just ignore him, Willard. We don't want to encourage him. Hey, pal. It's good to see you again. <coughs> I have never met you before in my life. All right. Uh, good to see you still have a sense of humor, unlike some people. <laughs> we must go help the professor. Here you are, Professor Bufflehead. May we join you? I admire the work you're doing. Indeed. Your discovery of Tutankhamen's tomb is very exciting. All that gold. Quite. Being an archaeologist must be very stimulating. Indeed. I read in the newspaper last year that you were injured during an important mission in East Africa. Uh, may I ask what happened? <coughs> I... <coughs> I, uh... <coughs> Tigers chased me. Please excuse me. Professor, wait! You forgot your cane. Oh, quite. Talkative fellow, isn't he? Quite. going for a little walk, minding my own business. When I came in here, I, I stepped right in this bucket. I didn't see it because of the darkness. The door was open. I fell. I could have been hurt. Falling off the train. Or worse. I'm sure that wasn't the intention of whoever left this bucket here. It must have been a joke. Joke, eh? Hey. Hey. It wasn't me. These pranks are getting out of hand. Someone's going to get hurt before long. Ah, Mr. George. I have for you this letter. I found it in the dining car. What's this? This is your last warning. Get off the train at the next stop. Or else. Hey, I didn't write this. Maybe it was you. I sell, boy. Not my style. <laughs> he did look <laughs> awfully funny with that bucket on his flipper. You think that was funny? You just wait and see. All is not well on the Nile Express. ride to the Great Pyramids this morning. Excuse me, Professor, uh, but would you like to join us? Oh, it would be wonderful to visit the pyramids with an experienced Egyptologist. Quite. I'm afraid not. Not with my injury. 
It's a good thing George doesn't know about that day trip you've planned for us, Auntie. Boy, we're gonna have some fun this morning, ain't we? Huh? Now I know I will definitely not go on that excursion. I think I will go out for some fresh air. See you off on your ride. Oh, oh my. <laughs> it's a whoopee cushion. You should have seen your face. You are a buffoon, sir. I've had just about enough of your pranks. An uncivilized quack. <laughs> Lighten up. I was just having some fun. Camel, I thought it was doomed. I wonder why it bolted like that. It must have been this burr. It was under one of the belly straps. The camel must have found it quite uncomfortable. Which of you put it there? <laughs> I didn't. But you did look rather funny on that camel. Well... Just to show there are no hard feelings, would you care for a stick of gum? Why, thank you. I don't mind if I do. <laughs> Someone put salt in my water. <laughs> no one, and I mean no one, can outprank me, so you might as well give up trying. Well, I'm not going to fall for that old trick. <laughs> gotcha! I didn't put salt in your water! <laughs> We're putting as much distance between us and that duck as we can. We're going to explore the interior. Okay, group. Let's check it out. I guess we are stuck with George. If we don't play any tricks on him, he won't play any tricks on us. I hope you're right, Auntie. Invigorating. Oh, Willard, just look at this view. It sure is something, Auntie. Someone pushed me. I stopped for a second and someone pushed me. What's wrong? We thought we heard someone call for help. Is everyone all right? Don't play the innocence. You pushed me. I could have been hurt. We certainly did not, old chap. I thought you said you would be exploring the inside of the pyramid. We were going to, but the tour wasn't for another hour, so we decided to climb like you. Yeah, old chap. This will help soothe your nerves. Oh, I forgot. You put salt in my canteen. How silly of me. <laughs> you won't get me again. I will not be fooled again either. Ditto. This is most distressing behavior. You were right, Auntie. Tricks do have a way of getting out of hand. Thank <laughs> you. 
doesn't go on all night. Thank goodness it's not the middle of the night anymore. Miss Muller, are you there? Are you awake? What's wrong, Omar? You look like you've seen a ghost. No ghost, madam, but something equally strange. Come with me, please. Good morning, Auntie. Is something the matter? Oh, yes, mister. Something very the matter with Mr. George's compartment. <gasps> it is not good, no? I tell conductor. And while you do that, we shall inspect the scene and look for clues. Careful, Auntie. This might be one of George's pranks. A blanket tossed casually on the floor is a perfect setup for a prank. Step back, Auntie. No! The prank has to be somewhere else in this compartment. Well done, Willard. You've uncovered a clue. A diamond button. Ready or not, here I come! When you opened the door so quickly, you created a draft which blew this cigar ash into view. Your detective skills are very well tuned this morning. Huh? Maybe George isn't trying to play a trick on us after all. But perhaps someone else is. George's day planner. With yesterday's date torn out. But there's a faint impression. Meet the faker at midnight. Willard, please gather these people in the dining car. I shall meet you as soon as I am dressed. George Ruddy Duck is missing. Who cares? Good riddance. He was a bother. Uh, we can finally relax. It's probably all some kind of trick. Yes, a trick. But a very evil one at that. I would actually call it a crime. Where were both of you between 10 and midnight last night? In, In our, our compartment. compartment. Then how do you explain the fact that this button was lying on the ground in George's compartment? Oh! I also found a cigar ash on the floor, and you are the only one who smokes cigars on this train. Oh, all right, all right. Reginald went at 10 o'clock, and I at 11 o'clock. We wanted to convince George to stop playing his pranks. He was ruining our vacation. But he said he wouldn't stop his pranks, not since we played a trick on him. Yes, I know. Just as I know you are not guilty because the real trickster is Professor Bufflehead, even though he is not the real professor. Indeed. Quite. You see, I first became suspicious when George seemed to recognize the professor from somewhere else, hey. even though the professor denied it. I knew something was clearly not right when the professor said he was injured in East Africa while being chased by tigers. As everyone knows, tigers live in Asia, not Africa. And my clipping file confirmed that the professor cannot walk without his cane. Something Willard had to remind the imposter of. The imposter realized George might ruin his plans to steal the artifacts from Tutankhamen's tomb if his real identity became known. And that is when George received the threatening letter and fell victim to what he thought were pranks. Yet I know they were the acts of a ruthless criminal who followed us and tried to push George off the pyramid. Uh, Arnie the Swindler! Good-for-nothing thief and con 
duck. Blasted duck detectives! I would have had it so good if that pest George hadn't recognized me. I offered him money to keep quiet about knowing me, but he refused. I met him during another job. He was playing tricks on everyone, but he didn't bother me because I ignored him. That's right. He never did play a trick on you, nor Auntie. And that was confirmation that George and Arnie had met before. Arnie clearly learned that the way to deal with a pest is not to give him any satisfaction. Wish I'd known that. But where is the real professor, and where is George? The professor is tied up in the tomb of tootin' quacking. And as for George, I'll never tell you. Never! Ah, but you have already told me. Please tell the engineer to return us to the Valley of the Kings as quickly as possible so that we may rescue the real professor. And if you follow me, we shall find George. George, until after we rescue the real professor. I am so happy you are safe at last, Professor Bufflehead. Thanks to you and your nephew's duck-tecting instincts, Miss Ballard. Okay, okay. No more pranks. That's another mystery solved. It is indeed, Willard. Uh, but as with most mysteries, answers simply make us ask new questions. Like what, Auntie? Like what happened to the real mummy? Miss Mallard asked me to search the entire train, and I did not find it. Well, it must be somewhere. It couldn't have simply walked away. I wonder, Professor Bufflehead. I think we have stumbled upon another mystery, but perhaps one that should remain unsolved.